folks, and welcome to Test Drive Le Mans, or Le Mans 24 Hours if you're in Europe, for the PC. This is the PC version, which I've never played before. I've played the PS1 version for years. It basically was my childhood mostly, along with Gran Turismo 2. But now I'm going to be playing the PC version, and you're going to watch me play it. Because I decided, I said so. Anyway, and I'm just showing you here the two cars you're offered to start the, the game with, start your career with. Uh, I'm going to sign with uh, Team Marcos, which is the worst of the two teams on paper, but I like the Marcos. It's a British car. It's the plucky underdog. So, you know, that's, that's kind of me. We're here at the first track, Maison Blanche. This, would, this was my setup for qualifying, but as you're going to see, I don't actually qualify because this game is very buggy on Windows 7. You can barely do anything. If you go to qualify, you crash the game. If you go to play the Le Mans 24 hours, you crash the game. So... I'm just going to start shotgun on the field just to make that task a little bit difficult. And here is Tiffany Dell with the starting grid. Viper Team Arica, GT2. As you can see, it's an all Viper front row. Uh, they're kind of the team to beat in GT2 in this game, which is interesting because the, the guy starting third, as you'll see, Lava Competition, GT2. They are the ones to beat kind of on the PS1 version. Group Racing, they're not bad, they're pretty good. Uh, as you can see on the PC version, there's a third Viper, which I don't know why they need three Vipers and one of other teams, I'm not sure. Chamberlain Engineering, GT2. First of the Chamberlain Vipers, the British outfit. Elf Harbother Racing, GT2. A Porsche team exclusive to the PC, they don't turn up on the PS1 version, Elf Harbother Racing. GT2. And off the top of my head, I don't know who they replace in this version. Here's the second of the Chamberlain Vipers. Nice white and red livery. On the PS1, they're both black and yellow. Black and yellow, black and yellow. GT2. One of my favourite teams. They run a really nice Mustang. Conrad Motorsport, GT2. The other team you can sign for at the start of the game. Estrial Racing Communications, GT2. Another PC exclusive team with their garish coloured Porsche. There's the second Racing, of the Elf Harbour Porsches. And all of these teams are real Le Mans teams, by the way. Augusta Racing, GT2. There's Augusta Racing with their Corvette. But you can sign for on the PS1 version to start with. It's either them or the Marcos on the GT2. PS1. But that car's quite nice, very powerful. And here's my car. Team Marcos. An English entry from its factory in Westbury in Wiltshire. The car is powered by a 6-litre V8 engine and has been very successful in a number of recent sports car races. So here we go. Boogity boogity boogity, uh, let's go racing. It, that, boog, that doesn't really work on a standing start, does it? As I think Daryl Walshrick found out himself when he did the Bathurst 1000. He was like, boogity boogity boogity. Pause. And go. And as you can see, this is the Maison Blanche track. Nice and hilly, a lot of elevation changes. Coming up to this tricky double apex corner. I'm going to have a look down the inside of the 15th place Conrad car. Oh, a little bit of contact there. As you can hear with Tiffany Dell's commentary. His commentary is pretty good in the game, but it's, it's that kind of... They got him to record various phrases, so they kind of get repeated quite a bit. Like he says, he's making his way up the rankings about a million times. Well, speaking of overtaking dudes, he's it's all happening down at the hairpin. Piled past the Augusta Corvette. Now I'm stalking the Elf Harbour, the Porsche, from 68. No driver names in this, which is kind of weird, because you can look up on Wikipedia, you can find all the teams, and you can find all the driver names. So why they didn't put the drivers in, I'm not sure. It's a bit like Grand Turismo in that respect, you just get car names. And as you can see, Augusta's a bit fuming that he's been ambushed by the plucky Marcos, so he's trying to look for his position as we go onto the bridge. Which always reminds me of the Grand Valley Speedway from Gran Turismo. Gran Turismo 2, I think, came round, out around the same time as this, as I've still got the Augusta up my trumpet. He's, he's swarming all over me, but I'm pretty good through these final few series of corners. And, oh, he's, he's really getting aggressive. That's one thing I like about this game. The AI is very aggressive. And, oh, here we go. Just swerving around the, the old part of the Porsche there. Yes, I have moved up the place, Tiff. Well spotted. The AI in this game, very aggressive. They're not afraid to have a lunge, get a bit of contact, get a bit of argy -bargy. Much better than Gran Turismo, where literally you will just be sitting there going, come on, I'm actively letting you go by on the inside. You just overtake me. But in this, they're almost too aggressive. But I like that. We're on lap two now. Piling through the double apex corner. I'm catching up with a couple of cars. Uh, there's a Rook Racing Porsche stopped on the inside for some reason. I've no idea why. And I'm now up behind the very distinctive fat booty of the Surtec Mustang. I've driven it on the PS1, very good. I'm now lunging up the inside. This is a bit of an audacious move. Oh dear, a bit of a Jason plate up the inside. A bit of contact there. Dear with me, that was a bit messy. I'm now up behind the Estoril Racing Porter. As I just take a sip of Pepsi. And you can see I'm already up to 11, so doing well in the first couple of laps. I've got a good run off the corner. I'm going to power past the Estoril Racing car down the straight. 
Well, I say that, the Marcos is pathetically underpowered compared to the other cars in this game. As you'll see on some of the faster tracks, I really am disgracefully underpowered. I'm piling up behind the Conrad Racing car into the top 10. Straight up into Knight. Nicely done there. And there are a queue of cars lining up behind him down the front straight away. They will try and get me here. I think they will because the Marcos is pathetically underpowered. The hamsters in my engine are desperately running furiously, nibbling away at the carrots. And I think the hamster power is just going to be enough. And oh, dearie me, I'm going to outbreak myself. Oh, still dearie me. That was... Sorry. Oh, goodness me. That was clumsy. I just completely had off one of the Elf Harbour Porsches. He, he's now in the gravel trap facing the wrong way. Presumably via protesting at me. Just like, what the hell? Where did that yellow streak come from and completely wiped me out? Yeah, my bad. That's that's not very professional. Oh, look at this. Rook Racing having a look. And there's another pile up down at the hairpin. It's pretty chaotic down here. And I'm going to try and sneak up. It's three wide. Goodness me, they're really getting into it, and I sleep on the inside, and there's chaos behind me. It's always chaos! Absolute chaos! Uh, the Elf Harbour from Porsches are getting a bit annoyed. Look at them, they're ganging up on me, they can see me. They say, right, was that him who had him off? Had you off? I'm, we're going to have him, we're going to have him, so I'm, I'm running away. And, oh, oh, careful, there we go. Oh, dearie me, we've had a Chamberlain Viper blow up in the middle of the track. As you can see there, it was farting smoke all over the track. There you go, there's Tiffany Dell commenting on the fact that someone's retired, and I saw it firsthand. And we're now up to eighth behind the Augusta Corvette, so he's doing pretty well. Oh, dearie me, bit of contact there. That's very gentle, I've got to say, milk that one. It's kind of like a footballer, like, oh, I've been touched, I've been smart. No, oh, get him sent off. Well, it's, it's not going to happen, mate. Going down to the hairpin, this is a good overtaking opportunity. You've got to be very careful on the brakes, as you can see. I'm spinning the rear wheels, lighting them up. So light them up, 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 light them up, 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 light them up, 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 and the fire! Not quite sure what came over me there. Uh, the Augusta car has heard my singing and has legged it. And because this is the old FIA GT point system, you only get points for the top six positions. So you really have to work hard to get any points in this one. So I'm still outside the points at the moment, despite being in the top ten. So a lot of pressure still on. I don't need this pressure on. I don't, why do I keep bursting into song? Stop it. Anyway, I'm coming up behind the Augusta Corvette. Oh, dearie me. Really he really backed up there. Get going, you pussy. Piling down the front straight away. And as you can see, it's lap five, and there's already people in the pit. So and there's a lot of potential strategy you can do in this race, and that's what makes it kind of interesting. Uh, there's the exploded Chamberlain just on fire. I hope the driver's got out. And, uh, oh, there's another car that's just blown up. Another Porsche that's blown up. Uh, and it's just sitting there on fire. As you can see, kind of a quiet middle part of the race. I'm going to the end of lap seven. But the tyres in this game are kind of like Formula One tyres, as in the hard, the prime tyres, the hard tyres, can go for quite a while, and the soft tyres last for about five seconds. You can see behind me is the third of the Viper Team Marikas. So here he goes, having a look on the outside. I'm trying to come across, but he just storms through anyway. He's not taking no for an answer. That massive V10 providing a lot of power, whereas my herd of small hamsters not give me much power. And now I've got a Rook Racing Porsche having a look. I told you they were aggressive, didn't I? As you can see in the bottom left, my tyres are just kind of flaming bits of rubber rather than actual fingers to grip the track. So I'm going to be in for a pit stop at the end of this lap. Here we go. There you go. There's the Klaxon. And it's quite an interesting pit strategy. You can, you, it gives an accurate readout of how much time everything will take. So it's up to you whether you choose how much fuel to put in. And it will show you if you want to put that much fuel in it will show you how much time that will take. And as you can see, I've put just enough fuel in to make the end. Soft tyres, repair any damage I've got. No Not got much. And six seconds, down and away. Four rather nice option tyres on, or soft tyres as they're known in this. And I've got three laps to charge up from 13th, but that's not as bad as it initially looks because there's still people trying to make it to the end in pit. And, oh, goodness me! Oh, dearie me, who's that? Somebody's just tried to lunge up the inside. That was the Surtec Mustang. It's just lunged up the inside. A wild move. Said, I'm down in 13th. That looks bad, but it's not actually that bad because uh, a lot of people have still got to pit. And speaking of F1 type features, look at the bottom right. You'll see the speedometer. You'll also see the revs as that sort of rising gauge. You can move the rev limiter up and down. If you move it to the maximum setting, up, obviously you get more revs, you get more speed. As you can see, I'm piling past the Augusta Corvette again. You get more speed, but you also overheat the engine quickly. You can see that little green gauge next to it is the temperature gauge. So you have to kind of manage your revs. But that's an interesting feature. I've never seen that in any other racing game. I think it's quite interesting. So obviously when you go down the straight, you rise it up to the top level, you get a little bit more speed. As I'm going to need, because my hamsters are screaming at me trying to keep this Corvette behind me. Oh, and as you can tell, here we go. Oh, round the outside of the Conrad car, pretty mud there. 
as you can see in the top left, more people are pitting, which means I'm now back up to eighth. So a points finish is looking on. But you'll compare that the Vipers for... Oh, here we go. Whoa! Jeez, I shot the gap there. Woo! I've got such a run off them. I stormed in between two of them and straight into the points. I can see someone ducking into the pits. So, oh, there's the klaxon. Someone's in the pits. Who is that? Who is in the pits? Well, someone in front of me because I'm now up to fifth. White flag is out. Final lap in the air. I mean, white flag is in the air. Final lap is underway. And as you can see, I'm piling up behind the Conrad Racing Porsche. This will be nice. Up to fourth place. That gives me three points. No, he's in front of me. And I'm going for him in the hairpin. He tried defending, but I was forcing my way through. He wasn't stopping me. So I've elbowed my way through into fourth. Nicely done. And I told you my tyres were option tyres. Because as you can see, the fronts have already gone off. They're just completely on fire and burning away. Maybe they get tires from the Days of Thunder pit crews. Coming through the final corner, then powering through the checkered flags in the air. And a solid fourth place to start the season. I'm well happy with that. As you can see, I pull along to the pit board, celebrate with my team. Well happy with that. Nicely done. In the most asthmatic car on the grid, the plucky underdog has come through for a nice fourth place finish. As you can see, there's the final rundown of the results. It's a Viper Mafia on the, uh, on the podium, two of the Eureka Vipers and a Chamberlain Viper. So there's the championship after race one. Kind of selfish boundary really. I'm in fourth, as you expect, because I finished fourth. So, not a bad start to the season. Hope you enjoyed watching the racing. Pretty good racing. And expect more from round two at wherever it is. I don't know. It's kind of a random choice selection in this one. So, uh, tune in next time to see how me and the plucky team Marcos get on.